Hey everyone, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and we all know that AMD are back with the 6800 and the 6800 XT. But today, it doesn't just stop there because now they've got the new king, the 6900 XT. Let's do this. Is your GPU running so hot that you can literally cook baked goods off of it? Well, MP5 Works have you covered with the stylish and functional BPC backplate cooler, keeping temperatures low to maximize performance and overclockability. Yes, that is a real word. Easy to install and implement into your existing custom loop, the only downside is your food will forever now be cold. Boo! But your GPU will be cool too. The MP5 Works BPC Backplate Cooler, available in both acetyl and acrylic. Click the link in the description to find out more. Mm. So, as you know with most of our videos, we like to get straight into the performance side of things, but there's a few things we need to go over. Obviously, we have the 6800, the 6800 XT, and while they did rival the you know latest and greatest cards from NVIDIA, like the RTX 3080, Supreme X, for instance, because it is one of the highest clocks. It's one of the best performing that we had. And also the 3090 model. Well, now AMD believe that they have an answer for both of these cards. And technically, when looking at the 3090, they believe that they have something even cheaper. The first thing I want to do, though, is I want to unbox this because it's quite an experience, I've got to admit. So the box itself looks pretty much the same as the 6800 XT. But when you open it up, things get a little bit interesting. So to start with, you open it up and it, well, it, again, it looks very much like the 6800 XT. But once you take that top layer off, that's when things really start to get interesting. It comes packaged very, very nicely. It comes kind of like a present that you really can't wait to unwrap. There is a mouse mat included. Well, the card for the foremost pretty much looks identical, again, to the 6800 XT. So as I mentioned, the cards look pretty much identical. You can, you probably can't even tell the difference between the 6900 XT and the 6800 XT. They both have eight pin connectors. They're the same thickness. The 6800, however, is ever so slightly slimmer, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, if the cooling performance on the 6800 XT is okay or good, it's not bad uh, in comparison to the competition, then in theory, this is a little bit faster. Specs are pretty much the same. Yes, it has some more on the core count, but that's pretty much where things lie. It has the same memory, 16 gig. So all we're really expecting is slightly better performance, but for a more affordable price point than an RTX 3090. So without sort of going through all of the stuff that I guess we already know, because it's all already been on live streams from Lisa Sue and the specs are there on the product page for you to all go and see, it's all about the important thing, the reason why we're here today. And it all comes down to the performance. So let's run them glorious benchmarks.
So there's the benchmarks, there's the results for you. And I'm sure we can all agree here, it's very, very interesting. We already knew that the 6800 XT was especially better than Nvidia when it came to new titles. The 6900 XT just took that to a completely different level. Now, if you're not seeing the card that you kind of want to have as a comparison with this, within that whole host of charts that we had, it's because your card basically performs less. So we tried to pit this against the cards that were firstly more expensive, secondly, in theory should have been better performers because of better boost clocks or just better performance overall. So that did include, you know, having the 6800 XT uh, reference on there. We also put in this card, the 6800 XT Strix LC, purely because this runs nice and cool. It has a huge boost clock and it does outperform a reference 6800 XT. So we thought this is gonna be closer to kind of, you know, what you see in there. So let's talk about kind of what performance we did actually see. So through the synthetic benchmarks, we can see that the 6900 XT was in a very close battle with the 6800 XT Strix LC, the reference 6800 XT, and in some cases, as I mentioned earlier, the MSI 3090 Supreme X. The Supreme X did outshine it by a large margin in most of these synthetic benchmarks, though, but obviously it does cost a lot more. I mean, this card comes with an MSRP of $999. The Supreme X, I mean, I don't even know what that's meant to be retail because pricing for these graphics cards are still all over the place, but I'd probably hazard a guess you're looking at around 17, maybe even $1,800 for that card. I mean, is it really worth an extra seven or $800? Now, when it comes to gaming, the 6900 XT put up quite a fight, neck and neck with the 3090s, sometimes even neck and neck with the 6800 XTs, which we know did outperform some of the Nvidia cards. But it did come out on top in, again, some of the newer games, such as Watch Dogs Legions, AC Valhalla, and Dirt 5. This seems to be the trend with all the 6000 series. They look like they're just more optimized for these brand new games, which feature DirectX 12. Now, looking at acoustics, it's on par with the other 6000 series cards that we tested, and is quieter than some of Nvidia's 3000 series cards. The only card we tested that outshines it when it comes to noise is the Gigabyte 3090 Gaming OC, and even that is only four decibels lower, which will be pretty unnoticeable when inside a case. Power consumption wise, it is less than the Strix and both the MSI Supreme X's, but is a bit higher than the Reference 6800 and Reference 6800 XT as expected. When it comes to temperatures, we can see the card does get much hotter than most of our tested cards, most noticeably nearly 20 degrees hotter than the 6800 XT Strix, which of course features an all-in-one cooling solution straight out of the box. The card also gets nearly as hot as Zotac's 3090 Trinity at load. You do have to remember though, this is a reference-based card, so as AIBs get hold of it, we might even see something like this, but featuring 6900 XT. Could you imagine what kind of performance levels we'd be getting? An Asus ROG Strix 6900 XT with an AIO cooler. Oh, getting chills. Now, the last thing we need to look at is when looking at ray tracing. All of AMD's 6000 series cards have been lacking a little bit with the technology, which is understandable seeing as Nvidia have had much more time with it. So it was kind of expected not to see such high frame rates in most of the tested games. We did, however, see a higher increase on Dirt 5, once again showing that they do seem to be improving with these newer titles over the older ones. It's also worth noting that Dirt 5 is generally a Codemasters game that's so generally kind of geared more towards AMD. So we did expect to see slightly better results with, you know, the flagship model. So there we have it, guys. Um, I'm pretty much lost for words. I mean, AMD didn't just come back with the 6800 series. The 6800 XT, I still think, is a very, very impressive game if you are playing some of the latest titles that featured the X12. When it comes to the 6900 XT, that just takes it to a completely different level. And I know there's gonna be people in the comments talking about why didn't I test anything on the productivity side of things, because that's essentially what we did with the 3090 when that launched. Well, we didn't do that for a very good reason. As you know, uh, applications and programs like Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, Blender, uh, 3D, S Max, Maya, all those kind of, you know, weird and wonderful sort of applications that only a very small, I guess, niche part of the market actually know how to use. Well, they now favor CUDA acceleration. Back in the day, they used to favor OpenGL and then OpenCL for your processors, but it's all kind of changed. So is there any point in testing it on something like this and going, oh, look, NVIDIA One and NVIDIA One again and NVIDIA One again? And the reason behind that is the fact that the people who make these applications had no reason to implement support for the technologies that AMD have because AMD didn't have a product. Consider it as kind of a chicken and the egg solution. 
you know, uh, you're not going to bring out an application that supports something that doesn't exist, but you're not going to bring out something for an application that doesn't have the support. It's all kind of, yeah, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. So <laughs> hopefully that kind of gives you an idea as to what's going on there. In the future, if that changes, of course, we're going to look at it and test it and see how this can do under a workload environment. But for us, it was all about gaming. And that's where AMD have firmly kind of put this card as a gaming card. They haven't done the NVIDIA with the 3090 and said, it's made for 8K gaming. It's made for productivity. This is a gaming card. It's aimed at gamers. And at 999 US dollars, I think it's an absolute steal. I'm not saying it's amazing value for money for the majority of users. But if you really do want the best of the best, there's only one solution, really. And I kind of, I don't know, I'm on the fence now. Is, is 3090 kind of dead for gamers? I don't know. It's a tricky one. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Have AMD done enough to kind of take away from NVIDIA of, of having the very best? Obviously, there's still rumors of NVIDIA bringing out 16 gig models of the 3080. Maybe that would just completely change you know, the playing field once again. And that just means more testing for us. Aren't we lucky? So you have it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do, and I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys.